Cheers and salutations. Welcome to Hard Lens Media. I am Kit Cabello, the host of the show. We go live every Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Central on YouTube, Rumble, Rockfin, Odyssey, and Kick. And special shout out to our Can TV audience. Now, we got ourselves a very special interview lined up for today's show because, as some of you may or may not know, uh, we will be covering the DNC convention here in Chicago between August 19th through the 22nd. Now, our colleagues, Do Dissidents, Revolution, and Blackout Network will be here as well with us collaborating and covering the DNC convention. However, as it stands, it turns out that the Democrats are not so keen into having activists and organizers protesting and being critical of the Democratic Party. And as many of us in independent media have commented before and will still comment, the great big tent party is crumbling. And what made the Democratic Party what it was, well, is no longer sustainable. And so now there are protesters who are actively protesting the DNC convention. But because of the city of Chicago denying them the permit, there is now an ongoing federal lawsuit. And I want to introduce two of the guests who will be actually representing some of the groups that will be protesting the DNC convention, but are also suing the city of Chicago as well via federal lawsuit. I want to give it up for uh, Kobe Gulenary and Rania Salem. Thank you so much for joining us here at Hard Lens Media. Uh, for our viewers and subscribers, can you please introduce uh, yourself and your group that you're a part of and why you guys decided or why your organizations decided to protest the DNC convention here in the city of Chicago? Kobe, we'll start off with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Kobe Guillory. Um, I'm one of the co-chairs of the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. Mm -hmm. And I'm also a member of Freedom Road Socialist Organization. And uh, between those two organizations, we um, we fight for a lot of the things that uh, Democrats have failed to, to give to people that they promised to give every oh. single day. Like, so that's um, just a very brief, I, I know we'll get into it more later, but that's a very brief um, explanation of why we're marching at the GNC. Okay. Uh, Rania? Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rania Sadam. I'm with the United States Palestinian Community Network. And essentially, we're, you know, something that a lot of people don't know is that the DNC is actually protested every four years by progressives to push, you know, the Democratic Party towards more progressive issues and to, to make to take demands more seriously, right? So this year is especially important for the Arab and Palestinian community um, because the pressing issue at hand is the genocide that's happening in Gaza. And, you know, the the leadership in this country are, especially the Democratic Party, are complicit in this genocide. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it seems quite clear um, that the and as, as recent reports are now showing, especially thanks to The Washington Post, uh, that the uh, Biden Harris administration knew very well that the IDF was targeting residential homes, community centers, hospitals in the early stages of the conflict in October. And with the death toll now rising up, it is it cannot be denied that we are witnessing a crisis in Gaza, the likes of which we have never seen before. And yet our politicians remain indifferent to it um for both of you i would like to get your thoughts from your at least the organizations at least the feeling um do you think there's ever a potential chance for the democrats to listen to you especially now that the city of chicago has denied you your groups uh, a right to protest and making sure that you guys are far away from the united center what led the city of chicago to do this to you guys uh i'll i'll go first um so you know the we understand that um we only get what we fight for you know um th those of us who've been uh, fighting for justice for any amount of time if you know your history uh you know that we're not going to get anything unless we you know shut things down we go in the streets we make things very inconvenient um and we disrupt um so you know we're not we're not surprised by the fact that we have to do that um, we're also not surprised by the fact that um, the, the Democratic Party, specifically Joe Biden and, um, you know, people like uh, Anthony Blinken have been uh, of, in full support of this genocide, knowing that it is a genocide, you know, knowing that um, well over 10,000 children have, have been killed um, by Israel with United States tax dollars. They've known this. I mean, they've known what Israel has been doing for decades. You know, there's um, Biden was saying in the 80s. Like if, if Israel did not exist, we would have to invent one to, to protect uh, our, America's foreign policy interest, um, the U.S.'s foreign policy interest in the Middle East. So, you know, none of that is surprising to us. Um, we knew, 
and um, like Rania said, you know, we have uh, experience uh, marching on these uh, these uh, ruling class conventions, um, whether it's the RNC, the DNC. Um, in previous election cycles, there was also a NATO convention in 2012 here in Chicago um, that we uh, that uh, you know a lot of our our comrades organized marches on. So I mean, organized a march on. So you know, we're we're not surprised either that that they're um, telling us to go and march four miles away um, from the United Center. But, you know, regardless of whether we get a permit or not, we're going to march there, you know, and um, we're going to keep fighting for this permit because it is our uh, constitutional First Amendment right um, to protest within sight and sound of the DNC. So we're going to protest, we're going to get that permit, and, um, you know, we know that, we, that we're going to have to fight for it. So none of this is, um, is surprising to us. We're just going to have to keep uh, doing what we've been doing. Um, Rania? I think Kobe covered it very, very well for the most part. I think the only thing that I want to add is just to reiterate the point that we we are we very well understand and know the violence that the United States commits here domestically and abroad, right? So just to reiterate, the United States is an active participant in this genocide that's happening in Gaza, right? The US backs it financially, militarily, uh, with weapons, etc. And we also know the the violence that the United States commits abroad in not just Palestine, but also all across the world, whether we look at the Middle East, Latin America, et cetera, and the violence that it commits here in its home country against black and brown people uh, every single day. So um, that's not something that we are not aware of. And like Kobe said, we know that our demands or what we're fighting for aren't going to be heard. We just have to fight for it. Um, and we will force them essentially to hear us. Now, unfortunately, this uh, election cycle is a click copy paste of what we saw in 2020. Two old men fighting over a cold bowl of soup. I love using that line and my audience last when I mentioned Trump and Biden. But yet uh, I'm seeing people, at least those who are in the vote blue, no matter who mindset, uh, once again, get triggered that Donald Trump is running again, to which I have to say, I think we all can probably safely say that of course he was going to run again in 2024 um yet now more than ever we're seeing the ramped up attacks against those who are critical against democrats saying oh if you vote third party if you vote independent if you protest democrats if you interrupt biden in a speech event you're helping out trump um what are what is your response to uh people who are criticizing your groups and organizations that are protesting the Democrats who are saying that you're helping out Trump or you're going to cost Biden to lose the election, um, you know, because it, cause it, cause it's abundantly clear. And I think we, we, we all can see this, that the Democrats are not listening to progressives. They've, they've made it very clear from 2016 all the way up until now that they don't respect pr the progressive and independent movement. They don't express, they don't uh, respect uh, anything that has been said to them before. And they just feel like, our votes are entitled to them. So what do you want to say to those critics who are saying that, oh, you're only destabilizing the party, you're helping Trump, and that your vote rightfully belongs to Biden? Rania, we'll start off with you. The one thing that I want to say is that <laughs> the only people at, fart, uh, at fault here are the Democrats, essentially. Um, the The big question, what that I want to ask is why would you fund and commit a genocide in another country and then still expect people to vote for you? It's, it should be expected that people are going to, you're going to lose support. You're going to lose votes. You're going to, you're going to show the world essentially what you've been hiding for the last years, hundreds mm -hmm. of years, um, what you actually stand for. And this is to the democratic party. So for those that are voting for, um, Biden and think that, you know, us not voting for Biden is a vote for Trump. I just want to say that me not voting for Biden is just me not voting for Biden. It does not mean that it, that is a vote for Trump. And what I want to tell those people that are fighting so hard for, um, you know, Biden to win, why are you, so, why are you actively supporting someone who is also supporting a genocide in another country? Why are you supporting someone who essentially has shown you that they are the same as you know, the Democratic Party or the Republican Party, they're essentially very similar. Um, one just hides what they do, essentially, much better than the other. So 
that's just what I want to add to that. Uh, Kobe. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, um, you know, there's Malcolm X described this very, very well when he was talking about the battered or the buttered. Um, he said that, you know, the, the, the uh, conservatives are like wolves and the uh, liberals are like foxes, you know, so like the, the Republicans will uh, chew your face off with, with, the, with the mean look on their face and the Democrats will chew your face off with a smile on their face. You know, regardless, you're still getting uh, you're still getting attacked. You know, we're still facing this violence, and I think a lot of the you know the people that you're describing who say that kind of stuff, like oh, your vote belongs to uh, to the Democrats. You know, it's I, I think it's kind of a quite frankly a racist um, idea that like as um, you know as black and brown people we should be indebted to the Democrats, you know, like they, they don't have to give us anything, but we have to just keep voting for them every election cycle, um, you know, and the, the fact is, you know, that's, that's, um, that's, they, they've won based on our votes, you know, like they owe us. So, you know, it's kind of a fundamental misunderstanding of how democracy works to think like, oh, you're at fault, at fault for not voting for the people who have given you nothing. You know, they've promised you um, all these changes. Like in, in 2020, you know, it's it's doubtful whether uh, Joe Biden would have won if there wasn't the rebellion um, after the murders of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and so many other uh, black people at the hands of, um, of the police. Um, and then, you know, uh, the Democrats turn around and give us nothing, you know, as far as police accountability. So, um, you know, it's the same thing with, uh, with immigration. Uh, you know, they uh, Joe Biden is is going around talking about how he can out Republican the Republicans when it comes to uh, to immigration. So all of that on top of this genocide that um, that there are American citizens whose family members there are American citizens who have died, um, who have been killed by uh, by U.S. funded um, bombs in Gaza. You know, and there are people. Um, you know. Joe Biden visited here, uh, here Chicago in November, and um, someone who lost um, uh, dozens of members of her family, like pretty pretty much her entire family, um, was speaking at that um, in, in, at a council protest of of Joe Biden. So you know, my thing is, if if you're not listening to that, like if that um, as, as somebody who is trying to get these people's votes, they're telling you that their family members are being killed in a genocide that you are funding with their tax dollars. If you're not listening to that, it's your fault, you know, if you lose the election. Like, you can't blame that on us. Now, we we are seeing, um, I guess, the superstars. And when I mean, let me clarify this. Um, there's the people who are the quote unquote heavyweight champions in Congress, in the Senate and House, who are quote, quote unquote progressives, like people like Bernie Sanders and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. And you would expect, uh, especially since they touted to be progressives and their colleagues in the Congressional Progressive Caucus, that they would be the first ones to really stand up and say something against Joe Biden. But since then, they have been complicit. AOC said he exceeded expectations, and Bernie Sanders have call, has called him uh, his good friend. And both were super fast in their endorsement for uh, supporting Joe Biden for 2024. And now we're seeing people like AOC and Bernie Sanders launching a podcast uh, talking about uh, the genocide and the crisis in Gaza. What are your thoughts on the quote unquote progressive Democrats in the Democratic Party? And if they were to come out, obviously they're going to be at the DNC convention. I'd be surprised if they didn't. Um, but what are your thoughts on them trying to at least make this attempt to pander or maybe tell people what they want to hear? Does it work? Do you do, do people, especially in your organization, still respect people like AOC and Bernie Sanders? What are your thoughts on their attempts now to say the word genocide, uh, even though they were sitting on their hands for quite some time since October? Is it all just an act? Is there, is there still semblance of sincerity in their words? I want to get your thoughts on it. Rania, we'll start with you first. So the the one thing that I that I want to mention that you were asking is, um, do our organizations respect you know people like Bernie Sanders or AOC? And I don't even think that that even matters. To be quite honest with you, 
All um, right. <laughs> I, it really doesn't. I think one thing is, is, you know, the, the one thing that I want to mention is that AOC for a very long time wasn't calling this a genocide. And then I don't know if you noticed, but it went viral that um, pro-Palestinian activists actually confronted her. Oh, we covered it. Ago. We we talked about it. That's that's amazing. So so she was confronted um, and that went viral. And I think that the pressure from Palestinian and pro-Palestinian activists um, really, really gets to them. So I think it actually is a part of our pressure um, and forcing essentially our representatives to quote unquote listen to us. Right. Um, so I think in regards to AOC, that that is that that is what happened but in regards to other representatives you know bernie sanders sometimes you know he's he's a liberal um you know i think that sometimes he Truth. can be okay in regards to palestine and sometimes he's not and i think that's to be expected when you work for a government that essentially is so public in their support for israel um those that work for that government sort of follow through right they follow suit with that um that u.s principle essentially uh what i do want to say is that representatives you know these representatives we vote for them and they work for us they work for the people so we need to remind them of that we need to remind them that they have to follow through with people people's demands not state demands right um and we will continue to pressure pressure them into doing the right thing and saying that what is happening in palestine is that the U.S. is is financially backing Israel into genociding the Palestinian people in Gaza. Uh, Kobe, your thoughts? Yeah, I uh, you know I don't have uh, very much to add other than one thing, um, which is that uh, you know the Chicago Alliance has a principle of um, you know we don't push politicians, we push issues. You know, so if if a politician um, has been very firm on an issue, you know, we're we're with them. You know, we'll we'll um, uh, you know we will will talk with them. We'll uh, help we'll help them push the issue. Um, but if a politician is in the way, then we have to push through that politician to um, to to get the to get our um, our demands met. You know, so like Rania said, it's about the pressure from the people. You know, because there's like regardless of who gets into that office, like this is a uh, capitalist economy. You know, there's a lot of pressure from the ruling class. They have a lot more money than we do. They have a lot more uh, political connections than we do. So anyone who gets into like a, a high government office is going to feel that pressure from the ruling class, even if they went in with the best of intentions. You know, so we have to um, overcome that pressure with uh, people power, with, um, like Rania said, you know, confronting these politicians. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm really glad that you guys were saying this because one thing I've been noticing, and especially my audience too, because we're all, burnt, my, I can speak on behalf of my audience, a lot of them are burnt out by electoral politics. Many are okay with not voting or voting independent and third party. And uh, we've covered here at Hardlands Media the numerous failed attempts by the Democrats, especially people like AOC and Bernie Sanders, to try and rebuild their great coalitions. And since we've been doing this since 2017, what has always kind of shocked me was how they had lightning in the bottle to, to potentially – there was that potential to do great things. The potential was there. But then they let the lightning go. They refused to really step up. They fell in line. They became part of the Democratic machine. When you had AOC inf infamously cry, changing her no vote to a present vote when Nancy Pelosi started wagging her finger uh, at her for the Iron Dome way back, I believe, in 2019 or in 2020. And it was just a sign of more things to come, their resistance to do force to vote, their resistance to fight for a $15 minimum wage increase, their resistance to fight against, or even, even that acknowledged the March for Medicare for All that took place in 2021. Um, there, there's been nothing but constant failure. And I've been saying this and been warning many people uh, who are in, in the Democratic camp that this the Democratic Party will implode upon itself. Um, do you I mean, is is anyone in your groups excited for this election cycle? Is there any kind of enthusiasm at all or is there focus on third parties or independents? And the thing is, right now, the media is also hyping up the danger of 
Donald Trump, which I have to say he's no different than any other politician, he, except he's not wearing the fancy neoliberal mask, smiling and saying things that people want to hear. He's just more blunt about it. So uh, what, 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 what's the overall feeling amongst members of your groups about this election cycle? Is there enthusiasm to participate and vote? And do you personally feel that this is the end of the Democratic Party? Because the DNC has made it clear, the city of Chicago, which it has a Democratic machine, is making it clear that they don't want to see you guys. They don't respect your voices, and they want to make sure you're out of sight, out of mind. Uh, Kobe, we'll start off with you. Um, yeah, I think uh, the enthusiasm that we have is to build this march on the DNC. You know, there's enthusiasm to um, to organize, you know, to fight for the issues um, and to, you know, whatever uh, obstacles um, the, the powers that be put in our way, um, you know, we know from experience that uh, as long as we're organized and as long as we show up in our numbers, you know, there's we're, we're unstoppable. So, you know, that's what we're excited for. Um, you know, as far as uh, like the this being the end of the Democratic Party, I, I don't know. You know, I, I don't have a crystal ball, um, so I'm not going to. Uh, make any uh, any predictions about like what's going to happen to the Democrats after this election cycle, um, but I will say that uh, you know the the more um, the more they refuse to listen to what the people are telling them to do, um, you know the 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 more pressure we're going to have to apply to them. You know the more people get uh, angry. You know there's there's uh, there's a high tide right now not even just in america but all over the world you know we've, we've seen um south africa taking the um taking israel to the to the international uh, court of justice you know you've seen uh yemen um shutting down the um the 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 waterways um you know for for palestine and a whole bunch of other countries you know are um are taking action so there's there's that pressure you know that that's that's what ultimately it's not about respect it's not about you know whether they like us. You know it's about the pressure that we apply to uh, to them, and um, that's you know that's what we're building. You know we're building a real tangible pressure. Like when when the Democrats come here in August, there's going to be tens of thousands of people there, um, and uh, they can ignore me as as an individual. You know if I if I put in a, a call um, to the um, to Joe Biden, I mean, to the White House right now, you know, they can they can easily ignore me. But when there's, you know, thousands and thousands of people, it becomes a lot more difficult to um, to ignore that that kind of pressure. Well said, well said. I want to get uh, Rania. Yeah, the what I would like to add is that, you know, I know for myself and for most of the Arab and Palestinian community, um, we will not be voting. Uh, if the Democratic Party essentially, we, we, we just won't be voting and, um, or at least we won't be voting for the Democratic Party. That's just what I want to say. In regards to third parties, I'm not entirely sure, but um, I would like to, to also say that, you know, Colby made a great point that we're excited to, to organize together. You know, the, the March of the DNC is, is built and, and created with a lot of amazing, amazing um, grassroots, community-based organizations. And I'm excited to be in camaraderie with my friends um, and with my allies. And the one thing that I would like to bring attention to is that for people that are angry and for people that, you know, don't respect the progressive voice, et cetera, right? What I want to say is that my voice in the end doesn't matter. If over 30, if the voices of over 30,000 people that were murdered does not reach you, if the voices of over 12,000 children that were murdered in Gaza does not reach you, then in the end, it's not about respect. Um, and that's just what I want to say. If, if that does not matter to you, if that's not enough, then there will never be anything as enough. Um, so I am excited to march alongside the thousands, thousands of people who actually care about my voice, who listen to my voice, who respect my voice, who will uplift the voices of my people, my community, my friends, um, and for justice, who uplift the, the, the principle of justice, of liberation, of, of the right to 
to live for for everyone everywhere um that's the only thing that matters to me so well first and foremost i just want to i know that I, you, you guys have a little bit of time and your your organizers you guys are uh, going to be making stuff uh you know set and ready for the dnc convention so just a few more minutes of your time here first of all before we do end this segment i want to thank both of you so much for joining us however I would like to plant this seed of an idea, and I will share this link if you can. Just maybe you two can maybe even private message me your emails. But are you familiar with the name Jose Vega? Because I would like to show you how he brought the ruckus to key Democratic lawmakers, not just neoliberal politicians, but he has confronted people like AOC, Nancy Pelosi, and a few others. And it should be inspirational for you because I want to, I want to push people to break away not only from voting democrat but also voting republican breaking away from the two-party system and i've been told by many of my critics that oh how dare you uh bring uh people in criticizing democratic party are, are, are you afraid aren't you afraid of trump to which i have to say no he's no different than anybody else and that's just my opinion but i would like to share those videos with you guys because i think it would it could motivate your groups for the DNC convention in August. It should be quite a sight to see, and I'm pretty sure it would sm put a smile on both of your faces. So besides that, I want to end this segment with, first of all, number one, where can people follow your groups on social media, online? Are there any kind of events or rallies before the DNC convention that um, you want to promote uh, so that people can know if there's people in the Chicago area that want to help out or join up, or where can they go? And then finally, to um, what do you want to say to those who are perhaps maybe sitting on the fence, perhaps wanting to help, but are too afraid to cross that line? Uh, Kobe, we'll start with you. Uh, yeah, so for the March on the DNC, um, you can find us on uh, social media at March on DNC 2024. Uh, it's the same on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can also go to the website, uh, same uh, same name, March on DNC 2024.org. Uh, and at that website, you can register for our upcoming conference on April 13th, uh, which is a national organizing conference. If you're in Chicago, great. If you can travel to Chicago for April 13th, uh, that's going to be an all day conference at uh, Teamster City, which is at 300 uh, South Ashland. Um, I also want to just plug um, the uh, Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. Uh, you can go to caarpr.org or uh, Carper Now um, on uh, on Twitter, uh, Chicago Alliance um, on uh, Facebook, and I think Carper Now on uh, Instagram as well. Um, you know, we uh, very briefly because I know we're, we're kind of running out of time, but we um, fight to get people who ha have been tortured into confessing to things that they didn't do or people who are wrongfully convicted, we fight to get them out of prison. And we also fight to empower specifically black and brown communities um, to be able to change the way that police operate in those communities, to, to really hold police accountable. Um, and we've uh, gotten legislation passed to that effect. So um, you can check that out on carper.org. One last thing. Um, we are a national, the Chicago Alliance is part of a national organization, uh, the National Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression. So if you go to naarpr.org, you can check if they have, if, if we have a chapter uh, in your city. All right, fantastic. And Rania, you'll have the final word. Uh, yeah, so Kobe covered the March with the DNC part. So I will just mention um, that I'm with the United States Passing Community Network. Um, our socials, our website is uspcn.org and our socials is uspcn on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, so yeah, just, just check out our work on social media. We're very, very active. Check out the Chicago Alliance. They're one of the most incredible allies, one of the most incredible organizations in Chicago. And I would also say nationally as well. Um, so check out the work that our organizations do and check out the work of the other organizations also that are that are fighting alongside in this coalition as well all right well fantastic i wish you guys all the best we here at harlem i'm sorry can i just give a, a Go ahead. just a plug by name because thank you rania for mentioning that so um freedom road socialist organization students for a democratic society international league of people struggle um there's a uh, the federation of uh, michoacan clubs um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, different organizations. There's also the, um, uh, 
the uh, Minnesota uh, for abortion uh, for abortion access. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I, uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of organizations, <laughs> um, but I, I just wanted to make sure that nobody's uh, left out. So thank you, thank you, Rania, for mentioning that. Well, we here at Hardlands Media, we will be covering the DNC convention. Our colleagues in independent media will be joining us in collaboration on August 19th through the 22nd. Uh, we hope to see you and your groups there. We will obviously reach out to you guys to interview people on the ground so that we can, you know, at least hear hear your thoughts. And who knows, maybe, maybe, maybe the 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 city of Chicago will allow you guys to protest. We'll see. But knowing Chicago politics and the Democratic machine, um, it's, there's always going to be a roadblock, but nonetheless, I want to thank you both for being on our show. I will send you guys those links, uh, especially with Jose Vega calling out to these politicians. It should, should, should spark some motivation, at least make you guys happy over the weekend. So um, I want to thank you both again for your time. Please take good care of yourselves. To everyone that's watching us here on can TV, uh, please watch our show every Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. Central on YouTube, Rumble Rock and Odyssey and kick. We're going to take a quick short break and then we'll get started with our main show. Again, both of you, please be safe. Take good care of yourselves. And we now move on to the main show. All the best, folks. And let's enjoy some music by Jesse Jett afterwards. Peace. Thank you. Idolatry, that's just fake And all that wallowing that you tolerate That's not fake The kings of colony Watch darts on me make our graves The kings of colony Know no policy, only rave Now once you fall asleep won't bother you what they say But the kings of colony While they slaughter They still complain We say please color me Still too solemnly Still too plain All hail economy Praise the pharmacy Seas in flames They're buying up Hawaii and the smoke's not even cleared. Those vultures smelled the fire and an enterprise appeared. Investment opportunities were melted down. Communities leave vacant space. BlackRock has been lusting for for years. The council meets in private and they don't discuss survivors. Concerns among construction groups are all the hyena hears. They'll wander through your city with this mocking sword of pity next to Oprah and her camera crew who tore the trail of tears. Where footage flows as freely as the stream of liquid steel and the pools of pure aluminum that trickled down your wheels and Biden's here to say he knows exactly how it feels cause he had a kitchen fire once and had to miss a meal and people still believe that piece of shit deserves your vote like he's not why supplies are being smuggled in by boat like he's not why our citizens were forced to stay and roast and he can't unfreeze your funding folks cause Azov needs it most I'll bet my every dollar Biden watched it with a smile I'll bet he knows the whereabouts of every missing child he's just the kind of man who lives to trample something tribal collecting cultures corpses just to throw them on the pile like he and all his buddies didn't dream about the day when those who dared defy the donor class were cleared away when home insurance triples and you can't afford to stay and your land falls to the hands of those whose windfall banned the flames the state will take lahaina and they'll bastardize its name and tourism will swarm it all the same you see the state we left, Lahaina, shows the ground rules of the game. The planes that in the night ignite the planes. And if questions raised that reckon the potential use of lasers, I suggest you take a closer shave by way of Occam's razor. And if those civilians stood between this country and its gains, then there's really nothing further to explain. Because you may know this already. If you truly know our past, but it ain't the first occasion and it will not be the last Where Americans are kettled in and made to bear the blast Are barricaded in and left for ash How many in Lahaina now are lying there awake And still can hear the city we left leveled in our wake They still hear all the people that we let the fire take Instructed from above to stay in place So look to the horizon
because a fire comes for you. Desire made incarnate of the power hungry few who instructed the police to not let anybody through, to barricade them in, and so they do.